so our next topic is generation of double side band suppressed carrier so there are two methods to generate double side band suppressed carrier first one is known as balance modulator and second is known as ring modulator so one by one we will see each method in detail so first one is balanced modulator In case of balance modulator, we will have two non-linear device. First of all, we will add the message signal and the carrier signal. and then pass it through the nonlinear device and output of the nonlinear device is subtracted to each other so first of all in this summer we will add the message signal and carrier signal so here we will add this message signal and carrier signal and here the message signal is inverted or you can say the carrier signal and message signal are subtracted so this is the carrier signal which is having plus sign and this is the minus sign and then the resultant will pass through the nonlinear device suppose this is x1t and this is x2t and this is a nonlinear device so it will generate some nonlinear characteristics that is suppose y1t and y2t and after taking the difference of this y1 and y2 we will get some signal z of t and the difference between this x y1 and y2 that is z of t is input to the bandpass filter because we are in the we are talking about the modulator so at the modulator we use the bandpass filter at the transmitter end and at the receiver we use low pass filter because we require low pass signal that is our message signal so this is actually input to the bandpass filter we will see it later so here we are getting x1t from the upper path that is mt plus ac cos omega ct and from the lower path output of the summer is minus mt plus ac cos omega ct now it is passing through the nonlinear device and we know that the nonlinear device having characteristics y1t equal to a1 x1t plus a2 x1 square t characteristics of nonlinear device we have seen that before in case of a square law modulator and a square law demodulator the nonlinear characteristics we can define up to second term and that is a1 x1t and a2 x1 square t so now we can put the value of x1 and x2 here and we can find the value of y1 so we will get y1t equal to a1 this is mt plus a1 ac cos omega ct plus a2 mt plus ac cos omega ct whole square 
this is y1 t and the characteristics of nonlinear device of the lower path will be same and it may be written as y2 t equal to a1 x2 t and a2 x2 square t. We are considering the uh, same nonlinear device, so that is why they are having the same constant a1 and a2, but the input to this nonlinear device are different, that is why here x2 and and here is x1. Now, this y2 will be a2 sorry a1 a1 x2 t. So, this is a1 uh, in bracket minus m t plus a c cos omega c t and a2 in bracket minus m t plus a c cos omega c t whole square. So, this output of this nonlinear device are subtracted here to generate this z of t. So, z of t will become z of t is y 1 t minus y 2 t and here we are having y 1 t as a 1 m t plus you can take a 1 common. So, a 1 m t and a c cos omega c t plus a 2 m t plus a c cos omega c t whole square minus of this term a 1 in bracket minus m t plus a c cos omega c t plus a 2 in bracket minus m t plus a c cos omega c t whole square. So, now if we take the difference between these two, we can see that here a 1 m t in positive sign here minus minus become plus. So, this is also a 1 m t. So, we will get 2 a 1 m t. So, z of t is 2 a 1 m t here, this is 2 a 1 m t. Now, this is a 1 a c cos omega c t and here minus a 1 a c cos omega c t. So, they will get cancelled. So, this is not in the input of this band pass filter or z of t. Here we will get a plus b whole square. So, we will get m square t. Here also we will get m square t. So, and because of this minus sign actually this because of this minus sign the minus sign comes here also. So, this is minus. So, because of this minus sign because we have subtracted y 1 t minus y 2 t. So, minus y 2 t that means here also minus and here will be minus. So, this is minus a 2 m t plus a c cos omega c t and when we apply the a plus b whole square then in that case m square t and a 2 with minus sign and a 2 m square t with plus sign. So, they will get also cancelled and uh, here we will get plus 2 m t a c cos omega c t and here when we apply a plus b whole square we get minus 2 a b and that minus minus become plus. So, this is also plus this is also plus. So, we will get plus 4 a 2 a c m t cos omega c t after solving this you will get these two terms only because here m square t and here m square t with minus sign will get cancelled here cos square omega c t here also cos square omega c t but it is with minus sign so they will get cancelled but plus 2 a b and here minus 2 a b and minus minus become plus so this is also plus 2 a b and this is also plus 2 a b so they will get added so that is why we will get this result. Now this is input to the band pass filter so now we can draw here. I was saying that th this z of t is nothing but the input to the band pass filter. So, here we have a band pass filter with center frequency with center frequency f c and bandwidth 2 f m with center frequency f c and bandwidth 2 f m. Then at the output of this bandpass filter, 
here this term is message signal so it is having frequency fm and when the message signal is multiplied with cosine signal the spectrum of message signal shifts to the carrier frequency and the message spectrum will shift to the carrier frequency and we get fc plus minus fm now we have good idea about the uh, spectrum of uh, message signal with cosine signal so now we can directly say that this will be having the frequency fc minus fm to fc plus fm now when it is input to the band pass filter if we draw suppose uh, because it is input to the band pass filter if we draw the spectrum you can easily see that what are the frequency component present so first term is having frequency fm so this is the first term and this is the second term this is center about fc and it is fc minus fm and fc plus fm this is frequency f so as we can see here that this particular spectrum is having bandwidth center at fc and having bandwidth 2 fm this is having bandwidth 2 fm so when it is input to the band pass filter the output will be this component only this component will pass through the band pass filter and this component will be rejected by band pass filter so this will not pass through it and this will pass through the band pass filter and at the output we will get only this spectrum that is nothing but output of band pass filter this is nothing but double side band suppressed carrier because there is no component present in the carrier frequency there is only a upper side band which is having frequency fc plus fm and lower side band which is having frequency fc minus fm so in this way this uh, can generate the uh, double side band suppressed carrier signal now because uh, why we call it as balance modulator so when we derived it uh, from the output of the nonlinear device and we got this result that is having mt and uh, mt cos omega ct our requirement was to generate only this mt cos omega ct because it generates double sideband suppress carrier we have given two inputs to this device we have given this two inputs to this device overall this balance modulator we have given this two uh, in inputs mt and cos omega ct that is the message signal and carrier signal but one of the uh, input is suppressed or one of the input is coming to the input of band pass filter and other is absent so this m of t is actually not required at the input of band pass filter because we want to generate only double sideband suppressed carrier so uh, the carrier is absent so that's why we can say that it is balanced about carrier because the carrier is not present at the input of band pass filter but the message signal is present if both will not be present at the input of band pass filter then we will call it as double uh, balance modulator double balance modulator if whatever input you are given to the device and if those inputs are not present at the input of band pass filter then it is called double mod, uh, double balance modulator and if one of the input is present then and one of the input is absent then you will call it as single balance modulator so because at the input of this band pass filter which is z of t one of the input is present and one is absent that's why this is called single balanced modulator single balanced modulator because modulator is balanced about
one of the input that is carrier here because modulator is balanced about one of the input that is carrier it is called single balanced modulator so that's why its name is balanced modulator because here one of the uh, input is absent and one input is present so it is balanced about single balanced modulator carrier is not present in the input of bandpass filter in double uh, balanced modulator both will not be present and we will see uh, in the next method that the input of the balanced modulator or uh, input of the bandpass filter will not be having these two inputs so that's why they will uh, that will be called as double balanced modulator so this is all about the balanced modulator in balanced modulator we generate double sideband suppress carrier so whenever you see the balanced modulator in your diagram you can consider that the output will be the product of inputs so it works as a multiplier you can say this is the balanced modulator you are giving input as message signal mt and other input as suppose ac cos omega ct then whatever will be the output it will be proportional to this mt ac cos omega ct there may be some constant with this but we generally consider whatever input we are given uh, the output is directly present in the form of product of input so here the output of the bandpass filter i have written and mathematically this is only a2 ac mt and into 4 a2 ac mt cos omega ct so this is the spectrum of this particular term so this is the first method balanced modulator now we will discuss about the ring modulator